afternoon on this playing surface because Love Street has undoubtedly suffered badly from the rigours of the season. It's very dry, hard and rutted in the middle of the field and certainly not conducive to quality passing play from midfield. So the players took some time to select their footwear. Thomas Dickrock, the West German, back in the St. Bernard ranks. Push it forward. It's Dickrock holding off John Brown. That was for Archibald. The early ball played in. And Nigel Spankman playing in a central defensive position in the early stages of the match. Markers are Nisbet and Brown, and the spare man is Spackman, allowing Stevens and Vinicom some freedom to go forward on the flanks. There's McGowan. Back it goes to Chris Woods. John Blank heading forward. Martin. This is Paul McIntyre playing only his second first team match, linking there with Archibald. And a superb challenge there by Vinicom. He took a knock in the process. It all was a dream start for Paul McIntyre coming from midfield. Walter Smith electing to sit in the director's box for his first match in charge beside the chairman David Murray. This is Wishart. Cross goes Brown. Wishart looking for Archibald. Screening the ball away from Speckman. Good running by Wishart. There's McIntyre. And the reflection appeared to come off Goodman to Torferson. It's a goal kick to Rangers, but fine play again involving Paul McIntyre in midfield. This ball played in there to the path of Fraser Wishart by Archibald. There was McIntyre showing excellent control. And a look at that again. It may well have been a corner kick which should have been given. This is Spackman. Stepping away from Martin. Vinicom's made a run. That's a great pass for Vinicom. Looking for help in the middle. And Haitley bundled down there by Black. I don't think the ball was going to reach him, but howls from behind the goal for a penalty kick. Good running, though, by Vinicom. Well engineered that move by Nigel Spikeman's pass, opening up the right flank of the run defence. Vinicom pulling the ball across the face of the goal. Haitley colliding there with Tom Black. Headed away by Stevens. There's Brian Martin. Chance to come forward. Again, McIntyre has found space supporting him from the right flank. Play forward by Durant. And Swigan breaks in the left. Haitley's in the middle. The only target for Rangers was Haitley. Now Tom Black turning that behind for the corner and complaining to Campbell Money that he got no help at all with a call. He didn't realise how much time he had. This bit has gone forward. So is John Brown. There's Haitley! You have been taken by Money. Excellent, calm, authoritative goalkeeping, but what a fine header it was from Haitley. Excellent corner kick this from Vinicom. Haitley getting free, and that was... Beautifully taken by the keeper. And John Brown taken out of the play late there by Martin. An angry reaction by Spackman. Well, John Brown kept his eye on the ball to head that to safety. And Brian Martin continued with a challenge. And certainly did appear from this position to be a shade reckless. Referee Les Mottram. Giving a very firm lecture to the Simon midfield player. Long ball played forward here and as it came through for Brown. Martin kept coming with a challenge. Spikeman to Brown. Martin's header. There's 
Ian Ferguson. Well won by McGowan, but Durant was quick to make for the rebound. And he's on the corner kick by his very sharp alert play. Durant himself will take this corner kick. Stick Rock back in defence. In time to sweep that to safety. trying to play the offside trap, but Thorkerson was alive to that. Archibald waits in the middle. And Nisbet does some good defensive work, preventing that ball coming across the face of goal. Thorkerson favouring the left side of the St. Martin attack. Paul Lambert will take this corner kick. One by Hayley, there's Archibald, that came off Harlock. Durant gets the better of Archibald. There's Wishups, there's Dick Rutt, Archibald ahead, he's onside. Met with a crunching tackle from Chris Vinico. and went back through the amateur and junior ranks to make a comeback at the age of 24 with St. Martin. Durant will orchestrate this. Back to Ian Ferguson. Was very well struck by Ferguson. And a corner kick has been earned. Short corner taken by Vinicom. Yes, Gary Stevens. The header by McSwigan. Well, a glimpse of goal there for the 20-year-old striker. 
Played in well here by Gary Stevens. Make sure he can get free of his marker. Got in ahead of McWhorter. So the kick out from Campbell Murray brings a very competitive first half to an end. St Murden himself noticed early on that they were here in very determined mood and it's been difficult for Rangers but they do appear to have settled more as the first half has gone on but it will be a fascinating second half to come at half time. St Murden nil, Rangers nil. The Rangers manager Walter Smith has made one significant change at half time. He's brought on Peter Haustra playing wide on the left at the expense of Gary McSwegan who may well have taken a knock in the first half. And it looks as though Ian Fergus has been pushed forward to join Mark Hately in attack. So a very important 45 minutes coming up for Rangers in particular. They cannot afford any slip up here with the league so evenly poised. And further alterations are pushed to Ian Durant to the right. There's Hately, beaten to the ball by McGowan. Cleared there by Lambert as far as Gary Stevens. Hately lets that run for Haustra. Coming inside, Wisher, an awkward one for the goalkeeper. On the surface, he had to watch that very carefully with Ferguson closing in. Haustra's shot to his right foot didn't carry a lot of power, but it could have been troublesome. chances St Murn have had in this match so far cross beautifully controlled here by Archibald and set up for Torfesen on his better foot to the left but he didn't really trouble Chris Woods hey, right, oh. away by Nisbet here's Torfesen linking with Lambert there's a bad tackle there on Lambert by Nisbet crunching in late no argument coming there from this bit. And Lambert getting to his feet. But it was good play this from Lambert. I think he totally deceived Nisbet, who was committed to that tackle. As the young midfield player tried to step inside. The free kick taken there by Tom Black. And right across the far side up goes Martin. That was as close as St. Martin have come in the match. It was a prodigious leap that by Brian Martin. And he got across the bow seat of Nigel Speckman, who was his marker, to get up well to that, and Woods would certainly have been beaten. A disappointment for Brian Martin, looking for his third goal of the season. Durant plays it through there for Hayley to chase. He's on a pace to get away from McGowan. This is a chance for Rangers. Well, the problem there, perhaps, on Mark Hayley was that he was moving on to his weaker foot, the right. But this really was an excellent chance for Rangers to go in front. Hately undoubtedly will not be too pleased with the way in which he finished that move. He's a bit short to Spackman. This Ferguson trying to find space away from it. Quarter. from behind. Stevens to Spackman. Stevens again. Spackman goes outside him. towards Hayley. There's Haustra with a chance. And Hayley also, and Murray scrambled the ball to safety. Well, Peter Haustra almost opening the scoring for Rangers. There's still problems, though, for the St. Murn defence. Here's Ian Ferguson. Putting the ball across goal. Wish it was there for St. Murn. There's Stevens. That's the drop lashing the ball downfield and St Murn undoubtedly got a life there some brave goalkeeping by Campbell Money as that ball was played in by Gary Stevens. Hately dummied it, it came off McGowan Haustra controlled it well enough 
Money made the initial block and then reacted very quickly to deny Mark Hickley. Stevens. Then again by Stevens for Hickley. And he climbs so brilliantly for these cross balls, Hickley. But always under pressure from this one defence. Well, there's going to be a change made by Sinman. Arn Irvin coming on, and the player going off is Steve Archibald. Tall figure of Arn Irvin. Provides some variation in the attack for Sinman. Well, David Hayes enjoying the match all right, sitting there in the stand with a big smile beside his chairman, Alan Marshall. There's Tom Black. Torfason, Irvin is behind him. That's for a big fellow, Irvin. Landing in the cross for Torfason. Good hit on that by the Icelandic international. Went through the cross swiftly, but that was a good move from St. Martin. And another reminder to Rangers that this match is very much in the balance. Alan Irvin sending over the cross. Torfason's glancing header and good handling by Woods. Sandy Robertson is waiting to come on, and he will replace Ian Durant. Durant deemed it to have done enough this afternoon. And the craft of Sandy Robertson introduced to the fray by Rangers. So that's a direct change by Rangers. Robertson going straight into the Durant role on the right side of the midfield. That beyond Brown for Torfesson. He would have been clearly in on goal then. Some not showing signs now. They'd like to win this match and not settle for a draw. Robertson. Brown was quick coming from defence. Now Lambert. The deception is made by Nisbet. The shot in the way. Reserving again. Martin. Lambert. Tom Black. Irvin well challenged by Nisbet. Irvin has caused some problems to the Rangers' defence since he came on as a substitute for Archibald. He's been very lively and skillful up front. Hayley's head up. Porter was very alert there, realising that Ferguson making that run off Hayley. Stevens lining up the long throw, Hayley at the near post. For Hayley, he did well, and so did Ferguson. But the final answer was provided by Campbell Money. Well, exactly what had been planned by Rangers, this long throw from Gary Stevens. Look how well Hatley gets up for this. Gets a very important touch, so strong in that position. Timing the leap well. Ian Ferguson coming in behind him with a header, bravely going in there. But Money kept his eye on the ball. Now McQuarter. Too long on the ball, allowing House to step in. Here's Ferguson. That's for Hatley. Uh, he will appear to be held there by Black. And Tom Black could be in trouble here. Referee reaches to his hip pocket for his little black book and the card, which will be the prelude to a free kick to Rangers, but Tom Black holding back Mark Hatley. So the referee having a check on the number for Tom Black, but he really was the last defender when he held back Hatley. A little card suffices, the Rangers supporters are looking for a red one, I think. see this again, Ian Ferguson controlling it well, playing it through there for Hayley, and he was held back by Black well, perhaps going away from goal, that may have been the view taken by referee Mottram well it's a classic position a set piece Spackman is also there now Haustra that was superb handling by Money, just look at the pressure he's under there as he took that ball which was played wide of the wall by Peter Haustra 
It really was top class goalkeeping by Money. Spackman running over the ball, Houster playing it beyond the wall, and really any error by Money would have resulted in a goal. Gordon Smith, the Sunderland assistant manager, has come out of the dugout to wave his players forward to look for a victory. Not content, it would appear, with a draw. John Brown with a free kick. Rangers pushing players forward. Hate underneath this. Back with Harlock. Good play by Teddy Harlock. He has Gary Stevens on the right. There's Robertson. Yes, he scored for Rangers. It's a brilliant finish by the youngster. And the sense of relief from all the Rangers supporters is immense. Well, it's been such a long time coming, but it was down to the skill and the control and the awareness of young Sandy Robertson. Relief for Walter Smith on the track now. But well, what a fine goal from young Sandy Robertson. It's his first of the season, created here by Hudlock and then Gary Stevens. Look at the cross coming in now. The control here shown by Robertson. The acrobatic effort at this time, money was beaten. Dramatic goal from Sandy Robertson, the substitute. It's first for Rangers this season with just six minutes left for play. Headed on there by Lambert. Followed by Shaw. This is promising. Here's Dick Watts. Well, what a play over that was. Whizzing across the face of this week's goal. Cross comes short, which certainly was a moment of alarm for the Rangers defence. This move set up by George Shaw, the substitute for St. Martin, playing into the path of Stick Rock. He looked up to see the support arriving in the middle and rifled that across the face of the goal. There's Tom Black. Headed away by Vinicom, but into his stoppage time now. Rangers hanging on to this crucial victory if it stays this way. This Paul McIntyre, maybe the last chance for St. Martin. Stick Watt has space in the right. St. Martin pushing lots of players forward. With the space it goes for Torpes. It's a good move this from St. Martin. Now they could hang a line across the front of the goal. No problem for Chris Woods in goal. Well, that might be the last chance for St. Martin. Indeed it is. Rangers have won a crucial victory with a goal scored by Sandy Robertson, six minutes from the end, but it was a tense, nervous performance, thoroughly appreciated on the end by these Rangers supporters. Sandy Robertson smiling there, a goal-scoring hero. He came on to replace Ian Durant and scored a goal which may turn out to be absolutely crucial in the championship race. It's a great start for Walter Smith. The Rangers supporters rewarded for their patience with that late goal. St. Martin showing signs though that they could be a force to be reckoned with next season. But the day belongs to Rangers and to Sandy Roberts. And the final score, St. Martin nil, Rangers won. Well, see, a very first game in charge of Rangers. What was it like to be watching in that capacity? Well, it was a rather frustrating match. Uh, due to the condition of the pitch, there wasn't a great deal of football played, so it was a bit back-to-front stuff and a bit here on screen, but uh, it, was, it was strange to begin with, but uh, once the game got, we got into the game, it was, it was no bother, and actually winning it obviously gives us a lift at the end. You made very significant changes at half-time tactically, and that was something you're doing under your own steam with no consultation with anybody else. Was that a new, different experience for you? I don't necessarily think so. I mean, obviously, uh, the responsibility of making the changes is, comes finally to you for, a, for the first time for me. But, uh, I mean, in every match, I mean, it's part of your job all the time to be looking and, and making the changes. And uh, I think, in our case, you can make changes and you can change the direction of it, but in the end of the day, the players are the ones who have, who have got to respond to that. And I felt that uh, the changes we did make uh, at half-time uh, meant that we were getting a bit more further forward in the second half of the game. And I thought